here's our final example. Now, I don't anticipate that you will face a problem like this, but it's a good one for us to apply our steps towards and see if we can still find our way through this problem. The steps that we've been using so far, we're going to be applying to this problem. We'll just need to be cautious about extra things that are going on. You might even, if you feel confident with our steps so far, pause the video and give this one a try and then restart it and, and follow the steps to see how well you've done. Or you can just follow along as we go through it right now. Think about how we approach these problems. Can we first simplify the fraction? Can we evenly divide from all of our terms? And in this case, we have two terms in the numerator, one huge term, 2x radical 10x, with a tiny term, minus 1, and our two terms in the denominator. So nothing that we can evenly divide out from all four of these terms. Looking at the radicals, we cannot simplify the radicals. I won't find any pairs of factors in 10x or in 3. So we have to rationalize the denominator. Two terms, so we use the conjugate. Remember, when we use the conjugate, we only change the sign in the middle. This negative 5x radical 3 is still negative 5x radical 3 in the conjugate. Only change that sign in the middle, in this case from plus to minus, and use the exact same expression to multiply to the numerator. Now it's about doing some careful multiplication steps. Two terms by two terms in the numerator will be FOIL. And because of them being a little bit more complicated looking this time, I'm, I am going to write out my steps. First will be the 2x radical 10x times negative 5x radical 3. Those are the two first and first terms. When we do the multiplication, remember we can multiply outside together. So we can do the 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. This x outside with another x outside is x squared. And we can multiply our radicals together, 10x times 3, 30x in a radical. Can we simplify this radical, 30x? If I think about what are the factors there, they are 2 times 3 times 5. No pairs of factors, and there's 1x, no pairs of x's. So if I think about will I find any pairs of factors, that's how I think about can I simplify or not. No pairs of factors, no simplifying. Next outer, 2x radical 10x times negative x. Now this negative x is like it's outside of a radical. It is, even though it's not next to a radical, it's still thought of as being outside of a radical that we can multiply to this part, the 2x outside of the radical. 2x times negative x will give us negative 2x squared and the radical 10x. How about inner terms? Negative 1 times negative 5x radical 3. There it is, negative 1 times negative 5x radical 3. Outside, negative 1 times negative 5x positive 5x. There's the radical 3. Save the easy one for last, I guess. Negative 1 times negative x equals x. After those four multiplications, do we have any like terms? For these terms that have radicals, we need to see the same radical. And we don't. Three different radicals means three different terms. And the last one with no radical means we're looking at four completely different terms. They cannot be combined. They are each up there in our numerator. Getting tight up there. Next, the denominator. We have our conjugates, so we're not going to go through all four steps, just first and last. But I still would like to write out my steps. We'll create a little space right up here. First, negative 5x radical 3 times another, negative 5x radical 3. Outside the radical, negative 5x times negative 5x, positive 25x squared. 
and then the radicals, radical 3 times radical 3, 3. So now I need to multiply that 3 in there to get 75x squared. With conjugates, like we say, outer and the inner will cancel. We're going to move right to the last. Positive x times negative x is negative x squared. Now, do we have like terms there? We do. They, they both have x squared. So we're adding the coefficients. 75 with negative 1 x squared equals 74 x squared. So let's talk about how do we know whether or not this problem is finished. There's no radical in the denominator, so we've taken care of that part. Can we simplify any of our radicals? We cannot. We thought about it as we did our, our multiplication down here. We, we realized that there's no simplifying to do with the radicals. The last thought is, can we evenly divide something from all of our terms? And in this case, we need to be able to take something from all four of our terms in the numerator and the term in the denominator. So take a look. Do we have anything that we could divide out from all of our terms? And we do. We have an x that can be divided out. Each of our five terms has an x available outside of a radical. So we're going to divide that out as our last simplifying step. That will leave us with, from our first term, negative 10 used to be x squared. We divided 1x out. We're left with 1x. There's the radical. Next, 2x squared. We divided out 1x to leave us with minus 2x radical 10x. This x we divided out. It's gone, so we're looking at plus 5 radical 3. And we divided that x out to leave us with 1. And remember, as we divide things out, we can never wipe a term out completely. If, it's, if it is as if there is nothing left, that means we have to put back a 1. And from the denominator, this x squared, we could divide out 1x, left us with 1x. There it is, 74x. And that is our final answer. We, a quick run through our checklist. The radicals are simplified. The fraction is simplified no leftover radical in the denominator, so we are finished.